Hi everyone! So for today's art session, we're going to be looking at the artist Claude Monet. He was a French artist who helped to create a new style of painting called Impressionism. He loved to paint things like ponds, the ocean, boats, water and things in the outdoors. He loved painting outdoors so much he even had his own painting studio on a boat so he could float down rivers and paint whatever he saw when he wanted to stop. So one of his very famous artworks is a painting of a pond with water lilies and a bridge over it. So we're going to create our own water lily garden painting inspired by Monet today. Impressionism can look quite messy. It has lots of colours blended all together, lots of dots and dashes and things swirling. So we're going to try and do that with our artwork as well. So it doesn't have to be a really carefully painted artwork. You can get a little bit messy with this one. So to start off with, have a look at the painting and get some ideas about what we're going to be creating. So you can see in this painting we've got a water lily pond in the front in the foreground then we have a bridge going over the top and then behind there's some big trees like willow trees and behind the bridge there's also reeds and things along the sides of the pond so we're going to begin with working on the water and the trees and sky area in the background we're not going to worry about the bridge or the flowers just yet, so we're going to add those on afterwards. So to begin with, we're just going to section off which area of our page is going to be the trees and which part of our page is going to be the pond. So the pond is the bottom section here, so we're just going to draw a bit of a line across the page there. So we can see this is kind of the water and this is sort of more of the trees and sky area. So it's about two thirds of the way up the page, and then a third of it is going to be the sky section. We've got lots of different blues, purples, greeny colours to put in here for the water. We can be really messy, and we can just have a bit of fun just putting some paint on, splash it on. If you're using paint, you can just use a little bit of water. If you're using coloured pencils, then just use lots of different blues and greens. So we're just kind of filling this in nice and messy. We might add a bit of green in here. Can put a bit of white in there as well. So you can see I'm not being very exact. I'm just sort of slapping bits of colour on, I'm sort of going in the same direction, lots of small little dabs of the paint colour. We don't want it all to be the same colour, we want lots of dabs of different colours to be able to be seen in there. You might want to do yours with a swirling motion with your brush. You can see I'm sort of just doing sideways stroking motions with my brush. So there is the water, and then we're going to go in and do the trees or the trees and sky area. So for that we're going to need a few more greens. So similar to when we did the water here, we're just going to make it quite messy. So these are willow trees, they're kind of dangling in dangling into the water. So that's why we're doing our down strokes with our brush here. And then we've got some more trees over here. So quite messy. Trying to do different greens. Just dabbing that paint on. And then in between our trees there might be a little bit of sky in there, so we're going to add a bit of sky, again really 
nice loose and free painting. Some different blues in here. In between. So that's kind of a bluey area. And it can blend a little bit with your trees. It doesn't have to be super clear cut. Everything just kind of blends together. There we go. So we're going to put that to the side to dry and we're going to make some just plain green or you could use green paper but it's nicer if you can color or paint some paper in the green color and we're going to use this for our wood lilies and for our reeds and everything. So just paint one page with lots of different greens or color one page with lots of different greens. We have one green page and we're going to put that side to dry and we need to create one pink page for our water lilies. Also just letting that a little bit of purple get in there as well. A little purple, a bit of pink and making sure it's nice and messy. So there's different shades of pink in there. There is our pink page. So we have our background, we have our green page, and we have our pink page. So we're going to let all of these things dry and then we're going to start to put them all together. So once your pink and green have dried, we're gonna start making some wood lilies and plants to glue onto our background. So on the back of the page, now that that's dry, we can start to draw some wood lily shapes and some reeds. So a wood lily shape is sort of like a circle, an oval, or a heart, because it has this little notch that kind of gets cut out of it. So you can do an oval, and then you can take a little triangle out of that, if that's easier for you to do. So we want some wood lilies in different sizes. to glue onto our background. So you can draw them on and then cut them out. The other thing we're going to want is some reeds for the side of the pond. So these are kind of grass-like shapes. So these kinds of shapes we're going to need. So we're going to want some of those. And then we're just going to cut those out. And for our water lily, so we're just going to flip that over the same as we did before. Now the water lily shape is, we do this curved shape underneath here and then zigzaggy like this. Now remember to make some different sized ones and then cut them out. Now it might be a bit of a job cutting all these things out, so you can always ask for help if you have got someone around who's good with the scissors. So once you have all of your flowers, wood lily pads and grasses and reeds, you can get your glue out and we're going to start to glue these on. I'm going to start adding some reads around the edges of the page here. Just a few clumps there. And then we're going to glue on some lily pads. And then on top of our lily pads, we can glue some flowers. Now not every lily pad needs to have a flower. You can have some lily pads that are just lily pads, and then some that have got flowers on them. Just whatever you want to do. The next step is we're going to add the bridge. So you're going to need another piece of paper needs to be the same width as your current piece of paper here. 
we're going to draw over this our bridge so you can place it over the top of your artwork here so you can sort of see how big it needs to be we're going to do a curve like this and then we're going to add some lines for the beams down there so these sections we're going to cut out going to cut these parts out in the middle now if that seems a little bit tricky so you can either do it this way where we are going to be cutting cutting these parts out here otherwise the other way you can do it you just do your curve we're going to cut this out and do another curve underneath and we'll cut both those curves out and then we will just cut some strips to put in so that's the easy way so I'll show you the easy way These are the bridge. Then we're going to need just some straight strips. Like this. And these straight strips are going to go in between those. So we'll glue these curves on first. Look at where our bridge is going to go. So we want to make sure there's a gap in between the two beams. So we'll glue one on first. So you want to be putting it kind of quite high up the page, about a third of the way up the page. So that you've got lots of room down here for your water. So the bridge is kind of going to go over your trees a little bit, as well as over your water. But just pop your bridge on. So we've got our two curves. Now we do the beams so we can just measure by placing them on how thick they need to be. And there we go, there is our bridge over the water lily pond. So there is our gorgeous Monet inspired water lily pond with a bridge. You can see all the different textures that we've got in there. The colours are blending really beautifully and it's quite a messy artwork which makes it really fun to do. I know there's a lot of steps and a bit of cutting out and things which is a little bit tricky but it really is a fun artwork to do and it looks really really cool. So I hope you have a go and try and make one yourself. If you do, I would love to see photos, so please send them through. And in the meantime, take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.